The Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter. Now, just a little preface here. Jesus is praying for his disciples just before that fateful time when he's betrayed and all of that goes on. So, listen as Jesus prays. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me have, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your word that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, you may be seated. Somehow it seems appropriate to today we would start the sermon with something we haven't done for a while. And so I'm going to start with a question. For those of you who don't worship with us real often, um, don't panic. You know this. You can answer the question. The question goes kind of like this. How do you say goodbye? How do you say goodbye? Now, this is where it gets a little scary for some folks. So at camp, we call it challenge by choice. You can choose not to participate, but we encourage you to. So now that you've thought a little bit about how you say goodbye, I want you to find two or three other people and share your answer with them. Just take a moment, and I'll be back, all right? Take a deep breath. You can do this. It's a bit of a dangerous thing to release you like that. Hopefully you didn't go start sharing recipes or something, I don't know. Anybody have the nerve to, to share how, how you do your goodbyes? Okay, so sometimes we just don't say it. We use other words. We're careful about the words we use. Others? 
Do what? I'm not ready to go, all right? There's still some dessert on the table, isn't there? <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Lots of hugging and so forth, particularly if it's going to be an extended time. So it depends what kind of it depends what kind of goodbye we're saying. Some families have rituals. Sometimes those ri rituals are really elaborate. Other times, um, well, we're very careful about what words we say because somehow saying goodbye has a sense of finality to it and um, absoluteness. Sometimes we choose other words. Some folks are very careful about reclaiming kind of what goodbye is, that it's a, a contraction of the phrase, God be with you. And so they recognize that in saying goodbye, even though it has become kind of a throwaway phrase, that it's really a word of blessing. Today in our gospel reading, we hear Jesus as he ends his time of saying farewell to his disciples, of getting them ready for that time when he's not going to be with them anymore. You may recall that this started a long time ago, that he has been speaking to them for a long time. And that it started out with him actually taking off his outer robe and tying a towel around his waist because they were meeting for that last time before, that last time before his betrayal and that trial on trumped up charges and his crucifixion and his death and his resurrection. And he has been preparing them. He has been saying goodbye by teaching them. He takes off his outer robe and he ties a towel around his waist and he kneels down and takes the role of a servant, of a household slave. And he washes his disciples' feet. And then he talks about promise. He talks about the promise that the Holy Spirit, the advocate, will be sent and they will not be alone. They will not be left orphaned that in whatever is coming, they will be accompanied. And he gives them a commandment, love one another as I have loved you. And he says, oh, by the way, I'm going ahead of you, and I'm preparing a place for you. And you know the way because you know me. All of this is a part of how he is saying goodbye to his disciples. Now, as I spent time thinking about this, I, I found myself thinking about a movie that our family went to see around Christmas time called Into the Woods. It's, it's that Disney mashup of all kinds of different fairy tales. You may have seen it. Some of you may not have. But the themes in that are around that whole issue of the ways in which going out into the world, going out into the woods, is kind of a scary thing. In fact, it can be a dangerous thing. And you can encounter things that, that could, well, could very easily end your life. Or you can come across people who will take advantage of you in any number of ways. And Oh, wait, it's also when we go out into the woods that we, we can get some sense of identity and we grow stronger and we grow in clarity and, and we have those moments where important transformation happens. And so the woods or the world is a place where both can happen. And quite frankly, let me tell you graduates, there are ways in which parents sometimes have a hard time letting you go into the woods. 
but we know that we need to, don't we? That that's part of our responsibility is to let you go and find that self-discovery and that identity and to encounter those dangers and figure out how to navigate that. And that's what Jesus has been doing with his disciples as he has been walking with them and, and talking to them and teaching them and making promises to them that they will not be alone. In fact, at one point he says to his disciples, you did not choose me, I chose you. And through the waters of your baptism, you have all been chosen by God. And in fact, as we hear the prayer today, and I'm grateful to our Thursday evening Bible study who helped me to outline this, but in our prayer today, we hear four basic movements. The first movement is the way in which God has claimed us through the waters of our baptism, the way in which God has given us to Jesus that we have been elected to be among God's faithful ones. And so that first movement is election, that we have been claimed by God. But next, God prays for Jesus, prays for protection. Protect my disciples, all my disciples, all my disciples. Because sometimes there is danger. Protect them from the evil one. But protect them so that they may be one. So that my love may be shown forth. And beyond that, Jesus prays that his disciples be sanctified, made holy. Now there are ancient traditions that identify the holy ones as the ones who have been touched by God. Through the waters of baptism, we have all been touched by God. We have been claimed. We have been made holy. We are sanctified. And Jesus prays that you will continue to be sanctified as you go out into the world, out into the woods, made holy, aware that God is with you, God is in you, and that you are in God. But all of this has a purpose. All of this has a direction. And that direction is particularly and truly for the purpose of going out into the world. To be out in the woods, if you will. Where you will encounter the dangers and the, all of that stuff, but you will also come to new clarity about your identity. And more so, so that you can share the truth of who God is and what God is doing and what God has been doing in you and through you so that you can invite all people, invite the world into a relationship with Jesus. Invite them all into unity. Invite them to recognize the ways in which Jesus is loving all y'all. And so today, we gather. We gather and we will pray a blessing for you at the end of this service. But we need to remember that Jesus has been praying a blessing for you and for all disciples. And that that blessing is indeed that you know that you have been chosen, you have been elected, you have been claimed by God, that you are protected by God and God's presence, that you are made holy by God's touch and living within you, and you have been sent on a mission. And no matter what, remember, Jesus is praying for you today